Right, welcome back. Let's not waste any time. Let's get this down. Let's see what the damage is. It's definitely going to be the rear diff. Sweet. Let's get down there and take a closer look. Well, that's a state of the crown gear. That there is an amazing profile. And that's the state of the input gear. Look at that. Lovely. Right, so we're going to do the metal on the plastic again. As a quick note as well, for anyone who's taken one of these apart and you're a little bit worried as to where everything goes, these pins are all the same size. These gears are all the same inside of here. Make sure to seat your O-rings in, in there, or you're going to end up having a hell of a leak. So as you can see there, the O-ring sits in there. One sits in there. All you've got to do is make sure you locate one of these down in there first. Put the pins in, locate the gears in, and then seat the next one down. Don't forget the gears have got a little washer there as well. They've got a little shim. So don't forget those comes with it. So when you're taking it all apart, just make sure you're collecting all the parts as they're coming out. And they just go back in. It's that easy. So I remember the huge debate were these asbestos. Can anyone tell me, am I actually playing with asbestos here? Are these the old ones? Because this is the, the V3 Typhon, but I got pretty much one of the very first ones, I can imagine. Um, so am I playing with asbestos? I need to reuse this though. So, Right, I'll just show you guys how I'm going to put my diffs together, what I do and the order I do them in, ready? So here we go. First, just add a little bit of silicon oil to your O-ring before you seat them in. Now what I'd do is I'd take what would be one of the sun gears, but they are pretty funky. I forgot to mention one house is a bearing, so I like to take the one that's got the bearing in, and that'll be the one that I put inside the case. Now that I've got this gear in, what I'll do is I'll take all four of the pins, and as you can see the holes there, I'll just locate them into where they need to be, and I'll slide these gears straight on top. There you go, that's what it looks like once you've got all four gears in. Two of the gears do sit low out of mesh in with that gear there, as you can see when I turn that. And the other two gears sit higher, so by the time you put the second gear in, which is this one just down here. And that's what it looks like once you've sat that in. And when you turn in that, obviously it runs the two top gears there. And in turn, it runs down into the bottom gears. Now what I like to do is, toilet roll holder here. One of these comes in real handy, because if you haven't, you put this on the desk, that's going to push up and all your gears are going to come out. So if you've got a little holder there, a little toilet roll holder, you just stick that on top, as you can see, and fill that up with anything that you want. I would be using 15k. There we go, diff done, now the awkward fun. So this is the awkward part for me with the Arma 3S cars. I don't really like this part for shimming the diffs because the shims actually go on the underside of the bearing for when you want to decide how you're shimming it away from the input gear or towards the input gear. So every time you want to decide which way you're going to do it, you've got to pop the bearing off. In this part here, it takes ages. Two hours later. Here's what I've settled on then, no shims either side, there's none on the crown gear side and there's none pushing it away either. It's a little bit chintzy, um, not too sure if you can hear that, but it runs free, it's quite nice. Um, it's got a tiny little bit of backlash as you can just see there, and I'm not going to take that out with a shim, so I'll just leave that in. Right yo, let's get this back in the car, but first we need to get these on here, so here we go. Sweet! <sighs> Well that was easy, so now that we've got that like this, I think the next thing you just kind of go... Oh my god. Oh armor, I'll grease your diffs. I'll even change servos. Just don't crap out on me. And we'll see how this bash goes. Back together, ready to bash. Send it to the sunset, but before we do... I need to fit some fans on that motor. What on earth is that I hear you ask? Well, let me explain. This is an eBay special. It's a dual fan motor mount with thermostat. So when the motor heats up, the thermostat will recognize this against the heat sink, I guess. Um, and I've just basically cable tied it on because I don't know where the hell you're meant to put these things. I've got a double-sided sticky tape on. Like I say, the cable ties go all the way around and I've just got it as close to the motor as I can. So obviously it's going to register the heat of the motor 
and then hopefully switch on and get everything cooled down. So that's a diff done, we've got some fans on, let it rip. Right, let's get switched on and I'll show you the deal with these fans. And as you can see there, the fans haven't started yet because the motor isn't heated up, so let's get it ripping, let's get it warm, see if they work. Yes, yeah, so I'm just taking it easy guys, just running this new diff in, metal on plastic, don't know how the big rock's getting on, so we'll see how the typhoon gets on. Well, as you can hear there, the fans are on. Right, oh right, after that, just a little rip in there, the fans have just switched off now, so that says obviously it should be cool enough, um, but when I'm putting my fingers on there, it's still way too hot, way too hot for my liking. So these fans are crap, absolutely rubbish. The thermostat does work though. So it comes on when it gets to like, what, 100 degrees? I don't know what they've got it set up. Um, but it seems to come on pretty quick anyways, it's not too bad. But if it comes on quick, it's not offering a lot of air up. But uh, anyways, yeah, more ripping. Right, back to where it broke, here we go. That's nice when people show up in interest, actually. <laughs> that rollers. Oh well. You can't win them all and I'm gonna have to empty that out. Right anyways guys I'm gonna call it an end there without actually seeing what's going on inside the diff I can't tell what the mesh is like so I'm gonna run it a little bit more. I'll run it heavy you know what I mean give it some abuse and uh, we'll see how things go I'll run the big rock as well but anyways guys that's it for this one don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and as always catch you in the next one.